Hello everyone, this is BMD Portraits. Welcome to my live drawing. I'm gonna continue this particular portrait using the most difficult art style which is hyperrealism. So I hope I'm achieving uh, the goal right here because it's taking me a lot of time and patience and effort just to finish this particular portrait. So I hope you join me. If you like this kind of raw video, raw drawing video, this is going to be long and uh, I hope you don't get bored and I, I hope uh, you find time to watch me uh, draw this hyperrealistic drawing and because this is recorded as live you might hear the world around me you might hear everything because I'm near this my house is near the street so you might hear a lot of noise outside but uh, I hope you don't mind because uh, I just want to show you how I uh, the pace and the process hopefully uh, even if I think I'm not gonna finish this on this video but uh, I think I'm gonna do um, a lot of progress here especially in establishing the shadows shadows are very important especially with hyperrealistic portrait you need to be um, to be able to identify the tone or the degree or the darkness of the shadows so like here on this part this is where the darker shadows are and then here on this part of this face the shadows is very light and very very subtle right here I use H and uh, 2 H on this very delicate light shadow right here but on this large part basically the shadows are uh, a lot darker compared here so you need to observe your shadows to be able to uh, make realistic uh, portrait or drawing so here i'm starting here with 3b with the light shadows or the mid tones right here um i started with like b the darkest is the b but here since here the in, in the jawline right here and on the neck the shadow is a bit darker so i'm starting with 3B because I'm using layering technique here and I'm using uh, uh, different grades of color of rather of pencil uh, because uh, by the way uh, if you want to achieve dark shadow you cannot achieve it by uh, forcing to put pressure on your pencil because uh, uh, you don't get dark you just get bloom or, or the shine of the graphite by the way what I'm using here is pure graphite pencils with a little help of the Krita color Nero for the very very dark parts only but for the majority of the skin tone I use pure graphite and uh, this pencil is uh, called the Mitsubishi high uni uh, graphite pencil one of my if not my favorite graphite because especially for hyper realistic drawings they are very very good with the tiniest details especially on the skin tone so here I'm not uh, really uh, going to be as slow like how I did here where I did different kind of strokes i did circular motion stippling i did cross hatching and everything but here i'm getting a little bit quicker right here because the shadow here is not very detailed unlike here uh, the shadows are dark but very detailed so you can see the skin texture in the pores but here on this particular dark shadow it's just basically dark so i'm just gonna go ahead and get a little bit quicker right here using this 3b as you can see i hold the pencil on the tip and the uh, a little bit sl uh, slanting or uh, horizontal with my stroke because I want I don't want the bloom or the shine I'm not applying pressure as what I said a while ago you cannot achieve uh, dark shadows by applying pressure on your graphite you need to use different grades of pencil so after this 3b I think I'm gonna use the 7b already for the darker parts of this particular shadow so here I'm finishing it with just the 3b right here but I make sure that I always uh, sharpen my pencil for easier blending On this very detailed part, although very, very dark uh, part of the skin tone, I use brushes, makeup brushes, small makeup brush and large makeup brush to blend here because I don't want to lose every detail that I put on the skin tone. It's going If I'm going to use like the tissue, for example, here, I might lose some of the de every detail that I put and I don't want that to happen. So, But here on this kind of shadows right here on the jawline, I will use a tissue. I'm just going to put it on my finger like that and then I'm going to just on a, using circular motion with a little bit of force i'm just gonna blend it right here because it's uh, the tissue is very nice when you blend uh smooth dark tones right here they can just easily blend the graphite without you know the shine or the bloom although it's the nature of the graphite to, to bloom it's understandable but if you can get less bloom it's better it's a lot better so after blending, I'm going to add more dark pencils here to achieve the contrast or the darkness that I want on this particular part of the skin tone right here. So as what I said a while ago, uh, this is not very detailed. This part is just basically made up of dark shadows. That's why I use the tissue for easy blending. I think I want to extend the 
the the graphite that I got from the tissue here on the upper side of the face right here I don't want to lose that graphite because this part of the face is also uh, dark all the way here on the right cheek right here there is a contour on this side so the excess graphite from the tissue um, you can just put it on these parts to make it a bit easier later on to layer uh, actual graphite so there is a very 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 mild transition from the neck to the face right here but it's not very very visible this line is not it's really mild the shadow dark shadow right here so i'm gonna establish it later on the drawing before i begin shading this huge part of this right face i'm gonna re-establish the sketch of the shadow or shadows I'm using the 2H because uh, this is a very light pencil you can barely see the sketch because I can see that there are different values even though it is a large basically darker darker shadow part but there are different values on the shadows a bit darker from down here and then a bit lighter here on the beside the nose right here I go back with my uh, 7P to even darken uh, the part right here. I'm not yet satisfied with the darkness. But I don't want to get too dark. So I, I think the darkest uh, grade that uh, I use here will be this, the 7B. Because uh, if I use 10B, it will be very, very dark. Which is not going to be uh, the same darkness based on my reference photo. Then I'm gonna use tissue again to to blend. Now I want to start the shading process using a lighter pencil which is the F. Uh, I think this is the same shade as HB. So F or HB. Uh, I use lighter pencil like um, just adding a base tone. I don't want to use darker or B pencils right away because it's going to be hard to adjust when you realize that you make some parts a little bit darker. It's really hard to adjust the tone when you start with a dark pencil. But when you start with lighter pencil, you can just... Uh, darken uh, some parts that needs to be darker so um, to be able to be more flexible with the shading I'm gonna start with the HB or this uh, F pencil right here and uh, I'm applying it using light pressure and uh, in circular motion because uh, this part of the skin tone right here is uh, a bit detailed also And uh, basically this will just serve as a base tone and uh, I feel like uh, I, I will be needing to add more darker shades here like what I said there are different uh, levels of shadings that you need to do on the skin tone you cannot just even if it is just 
graphite, black and white, uh, you still need to be able to, uh, based on your reference photo, to be able to uh, do proper shadings and uh, draw the variety of, or the degree of the darkness of every shadow in every part of the of the face. Like uh, here, this part under the nose, this is a bit darker compared to some other parts right here and right here. But bottom line, with this kind of art style, patience is really the key. I think it's better to sharpen your hard pencils, even the B, and then the, all the hard pencils that you use. You sharpen it, you expose a large lead, and then you sharpen it very thinly. Uh, because it's going to be more flexible, especially if you are uh, shading uh, subtle shadows right here. The shadows that are not very, very dark. And uh, it's easy also for the details. And at the same time, uh, you don't need to sharpen so much because uh, you are just using it like this in a slanting position. And uh, uh, it seems like the paper is uh, sharpening it when you, you, when you use it this way. And uh, the shade will be uh, easier to cover the the skin tone with this uh, long lead and uh, it's easier to control also the shading it, it becomes more even I'm doing a little bit of a cross hatching uh, just to cover the, the large area of the paper and then I'm gonna go back with uh, when I'm going to add skin details I'm going to go back to the stippling method which is the small circular uh, motion I might use a darker pencil with uh, the details of the skin tone but here, it's just like of establishing the shadow right here. As you can see, I quickly cover the surface of the paper with this very nice uh, light uh, shadow. And my pencil remains sharp because I'm just using the side of the, not the tip, the side of the tip and keep uh, Keep it like uh, moving around to maintain the sharpness of the pencil. And now I'm not gonna be using tissue on this part like what I did here. Here I used the tissue because this is a solid dark shadow but on this part there I can see tiny skin details like here so I'm gonna use a uh, soft brush, makeup brush, to gently, in a circular motion, gently blend it. I don't want to use force with this because uh, I still want to retain some of the details that the HB or the F pencil made here on this part of the face. Going back to the F pencil, I'm just gonna do the same thing right here under the lower lip. But there is this uh, uh, necklace pendant on his that he is biting right here. So I'm just gonna go or uh, go around this, uh, uh, this. What do you call it? A pendant.
this particular shadow right here is not very detailed so I just uh, do the cross hatching here I'm still using the F or the HB pencil There is a very nice transition or gradient of, of shadow right here from this dark and then going lighter and lighter upwards. And then I'm gonna put lighter stroke as I go upward of this nice uh, shadow right here on the chin. I use a smaller brush on the edge of this uh, pendant I'm gonna go back with my lightest pencil here, the 2H. Before I continue shading the large portion of the face, I wanna establish very light tone right here. Using this 2H pencil. I go back with my F pencil or if you don't have the F you can use the HB to start shading the large part of the face I start with the contour I'm gonna start drawing his uh, mole right here.
I'm still using the F pencil, but uh, on this part I'm trying to the, the stroke that I'm using is circular motion and stippling right here because uh, this part is very very detailed in terms of the skin textures and pores. Even though this kind of style requires a lot of time and patience, surprisingly I'm enjoying it uh, because uh, I, I'm just worrying about the, the shadows, the darkness of some shadows compared to other shadows and uh, unlike colored pencils, I have to think about the colors that I will use or layer together to get the color of the skin tone but here you don't have to worry about anything, just the shadows and the contrast of the drawing and uh, you can all achieve uh, those values by using different kinds and layer of uh, grade of the graphite so here I'm still on the H uh, pencil if you don't have uh, rather the F pencil if you don't have this F you can use the H or the HB the B grade is already very dark so uh, if you are establishing uh, values uh, I don't want to start with the B because it's hard to correct Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this art style. Uh, do you also plan to do this kind of style? Do you have the patience? And are you willing to spend hours and hours just to finish you know, this kind of portrait? Because uh, me personally, I like to do something like, like this once in a while, but not all the time. Whenever I use graphite, this is this kind of style is what I like to do because uh, graphite is very very flexible in terms of uh, creating detailed skin tone. But whenever I want something like a looser style, which is uh, not hyper realistic, uh, I use charcoal pencils. Uh, can you see that uh, on this part of the face, I am trying to be a little bit uh, faster in terms of the layering right here because this is not very detailed skin tone but not very dark as well especially on the transition from this darker shadow up to this part where uh, the skin tone is also layered but uh, a little bit lighter so there is a gradient of values right here from dark all the way up here to the light part I'm almost done with the base of this uh, majority of the face right here using still my F pencil and uh, a good substitute for F pencil is the HB or even the H. So uh, my advice to you if you're studying graphite, if you're a beginner with graphite pencils, uh, the reason why graphite has a lot of grades ranging from uh, the H uh, like 6H, I think there, there, there is a 6H to 5H uh, going softer and softer uh, up to the H. The H is the softer in the, in the range of the H 
uh, the HB rather, the HB. And then you have the darker pencils that grades from B up to, I think now there is already 12B, if I'm not mistaken. But um, you don't need all the, the grades. You just pick at least, uh, my uh, suggestion is on average, around uh, the, the, what can I say, um, the least number of pencils that I would suggest. Although you can add more if you want uh, um, more grades. The list is around, I think, six pieces of different grades ranging from H to 12B. Just pick uh, one hard pencil, one H pencil, and then you need to have the B always. Do not lose the B in the range. And then you can have, um, like the HB also is very nice to have. Uh, I suggest you have the 2H, the HB, the B, and then the 3B, and then the 5B, 5B or 7B. And then you can get the dark uh, colors like 10B, 8B, uh, 8B. You, you just pick two uh, between 8B to 12B. Or you get 8B. And then you get the 12B, the darkest. It's nice to have the darkest uh, value, uh, the, the darkest graphite grade, the 12B. You can use it um, if you want very, very dark uh, value or very, very dark shadow. But for me, I don't have the 12B, but I use the Krita Color Nero Medium because this is what will give you a very, very deep black uh, color, or rather value, like in the nostril or on, in, on the eyeball. Because uh, especially if you're studying realism, you need a wide range of values to make uh, realistic portraits. And for, for graphite, some people would combine graphite with charcoal, but uh, for me personally, I, especially on the skin tone, um, because the correct color is not really charcoal, it's a... Uh, more of like it's charcoal but it's oil based so it's, it behaves like the graphite but i don't I personally do not like to mix the regular charcoal with graphite as much as possible i don't want to uh like even char uh, charcoal pencils and then graphite uh, for me they don't mix well together because uh, uh sometimes or most of the time the charcoal can drown up drown out the value of the graphite it's because the graphite is more of like grayish and the charcoal is too dark too black for the graphite sometimes like for example when you layer dark graphite you can see that the um uh, that the graphite is already very dark like here but if you put charcoal for example on the background or for the hair you, you use charcoal the graphite seems to become very very light so uh that is the reason why i do not like using as much as possible charcoal powder uh or charcoal pencil together with the graphite And sometimes if you put charcoal powder, for example, on the, on the shadows, sometimes when you put uh, uh, graphite on top of the charcoal base, it seems that the graphite wouldn't be as effective. Or it, it almost you cannot almost layer a graphite on top of the charcoal. So um, I hope you are still... Uh, not getting bored with uh, this real-time video right here. I'm gonna because I'm showing you the proper way, not the proper, but my style of uh, shading skin tone, realistic skin tone with using graphite uh, pencil. Because uh, I, I understand that, especially for people who are who are trying to learn graphite and trying to learn to do realistic skin tone and even shading skin tone, there are a lot of artists who prefer. Uh, long videos raw videos like this one compared to uh the speed video the the, the video that they edited the speed that's why uh, I'm, I'm trying to cater for those young and the beginner artists who are very much interested with shading the skin tone using pencils particularly the graphite pencils and uh, uh for some artists whose style is different from this who don't do very realistic portraits like this one uh, they, might, they might not get interested with this kind of uh, drawing tutorial I think uh, I'm almost done because after this we're going to layer more and more graphite uh, darker shades because uh, layering is very important especially for graphite to establish a more uh, what do you call this full bodied and deep and more uh, and, and uh, drawing with a lot of more contrasts 
because more contrast means it's more realistic, more three-dimensional. Now using a soft big makeup brush right here, I'm just going to blend. I'm, I'm going to start with a lighter shade right here because I don't want it to, I don't want the darker shade to come up here. I want to make it lighter in terms of the shading. So using soft pressure in circular motion. And we have a very nice, uh, very light graphite shadings right here okay and then here it's a little bit lighter and then I'm gonna go on here because this like this diagonal area right here is a bit darker Okay, and then I'm gonna get the tissue again just to even out especially here on the darker shadows right here and then on the transition from the neck and the jawline right here and here on the diagonal uh, what do you call it the contour of the face shadow right here which is a bit darker and then i go back to the brush to smoothen even more I think I need to make this shadow right here a little bit darker so I continue using my 7B The skin tone right here on the right side, on this right side of the face, is significantly lighter than this uh, huge part of the uh, left uh, right side of the face. So this is a lot darker compared to this part. But on this lighter part, the details are more visible right here. So using a small tiny uh, dots right here, I'm just gonna draw the skin details here on the side of the mouth using B pencil. This is the B pencil. As you can see, this is not uh, the Mitsubishi. This is the Mitsubishi Hayuni pencil, but I just realized that uh, I already ran out of the B of this Mitsubishi Hayuni, so I decided to use my old Caran Dash Grafood uh, Graphite. So I'll just continue later on the, the details, the, the, uh, putting up, uh, putting the details on this part. But uh, for this time, I just want to make sure to shade darker tones on this huge part of the face. Uh, I'm going with from light to dark. So uh, I already 
have put uh, a beautiful light tone of the HB or the F pencil. Now I'm going a little bit darker using the B pencil. This graph wood, uh, current dash graph wood graphite pencil is very, very smooth to use. A very nice uh, graphite pencil also, but a little bit more pricey and expensive compared to the, uh, the Mitsubishi Hayuni.
I'm still using the B grade pencil. Although I can see that uh, I would need to use darker pencil, especially here on the e uh, the far edge of uh, this side of the face where the shadows are very very dark. So I think the B is not sufficient to light here, but I wanna just put the B here and then add a darker pencil later on, maybe a, a 3B maybe. Can you see how smooth to layer this uh, graphite? This is the Karen Dash Graphwood uh, B grade pencil. I was supposed to be using the Mitsubishi Uni, pure Mitsubishi Uni graphite pencil, but uh, I saw that uh, I no longer have the B. So I use this very nice brand, although very, very expensive compared to other graphite. So shading is basically just trying to observe the intensity of the shadows and then you try to use different shades of pencil to reflect the, the tone or the, the shadow for better contrast. As you can see, uh, this part is significantly darker compared to this part. So you know that the light is coming from this side. Uh, so in order to, to copy or to get on your portrait the right contrast, you need to be able to, to show through the proper shading the, the the darkness that it requires to be able to um as you can see here uh, because i have not been using darker pencils here you can see that it's a little bit flat at the moment but uh, later on when we added when we add more dark color uh, uh, rather dark tones uh the the first face will look a little bit slimmer especially if you've got the light contour here through the darker shadows you will see that uh, uh the face will become uh slimmer and uh, with especially when the, the bones here on the cheek should come out and you can just achieve it through proper shading of the skin tone you need to observe where your darker shadows are where are the mid tones like i could see that the mid tone is right here in this area and then this is a bit darker and then there is a bit, a bit of a light tone right here um it's not very very light like this not as light as this is still shaded using still the P. I'm not trying to add the uh, skin details yet here because uh, I'm just like blocking in my shadows. For this uh, very very li uh, large surface, I'm just uh, using the cross hatching technique to quickly fill in the graphite. When it comes to graphite pencils, uh, it's also important to use the light paper. Um, in my opinion, uh, you cannot use too rough uh, uh, papers with two with, with very rough surfaces uh, because uh, uh, it's not going to be very smooth. And uh, you cannot also use too smooth paper with almost no texture because there's nothing to hold the graphite. So um, you need to use papers with very fine, strong tooth or texture but not too rough like the, some watercolor papers I love using Strathmore papers with this kind of uh, with, with graphite
I'm not yet blending the skin tone. Um, I just want to cover everything and to layer um, the shadows using this B pencil. This is the Karen Dash Graph Wood and I love how smooth this pencil works. Even this uh, Mitsubishi High Uni, this is also very nice. I think they are equally nice and great and high quality graphite pencils because they work very very smoothly on paper. They are not scratchy. You can see that um, they leave a very nice smooth pigment on or rather a uh, smooth lead on the paper graphite lead which is very very nice it feels like it's a really easy to layer skin tone a realistic skin tone using high quality graphite pencils like this Th they are a bit pricey compared to other brands but uh, you won't regret having them and uh, i will still blend this after i applied this uh B pencil on the skin tone and then after blending I'm gonna layer um, a darker grade on top to achieve the kind of contrast that uh, is required based on my reference photo it almost feels like I don't need to blend anymore because of the smoothness of the layer that I put using this uh, pencil, this graphite pencil. This area right here under the eye bags uh, is very, very highly detailed. Based on my reference, I can see the skin pores, so later you will see how I, uh, how I uh, uh, draw these detailed parts right here. So I layer this B pencil using tiny circular motion. Now I'm gently layering uh, shadows for a smoother transition from the nose to the cheek. This very nice textured uh, skin tone here on the nose should continue uh, here on this part and under the eye. I think I can see some skin textures and details up to this part right here. right here on this um, part down here is just um, solid darker shadow right here and that is what will give contrast to the lighter shadows right here So even after this stage, I am not pushing hard or putting pressure on the pencil because uh, I don't want the graphite 
to bloom because it's a natural uh, behavior of the graphite to have the bloom or the shine but if you layer it properly like this very very um light uh pressure uh the, the the bloom or the shine of the graphite will be very minimal so don't be tempted to add pressure to achieve darker tones or darker shadows what you should do is you do it layer after layer using light pencils up to the dark pencil so uh you need to take advantage of the grade of the graphite so but do not be tempted to use the 8b or the 10b on the skin tone because that will be that is going to be too dark for the skin tone especially if you are drawing fair uh skin tones like this one just make sure to analyze the the, the tone or the shade of the shadow so you cannot just get your 5b up to your 8b and to uh, layer it on the skin tone right away you, you need to, to layer it um, layer after layer and try to build the shadow uh, not uh, right away you need to uh, have patience to layer and uh, like what I'm doing here I'm layering from light to dark because it's hard to correct if you put pencils that are too dark grades that are too dark on the skin tone it's really hard you cannot you can almost you can't erase the the dark uh shadow that you you put so uh, what i do is i do from light to dark and patiently i'm trying to layer everything using this b pencil a while ago i used the lighter pencil which is the hb or the f I love this kind of process. I don't know with you. Do you have the patience to to create something as realistic? Um, because there are artists who prefer quick drawings, uh, looser uh, art style, which is totally uh, equally great art style. But uh, I also do that sometimes. And uh, sometimes I also want to challenge myself with this kind of style, which is, I think, one of the most, or if not the most difficult art style which is hyper realism and uh, I hope uh, I'm getting it right up to this point by the way I would like to thank uh, this chance to thank all my followers, all my uh, subscribers, um, of course, to all my Filipino supporters from day one who has been uh, very much supportive with my channel, who are always uh, waiting for my videos and watching my videos. And then I also, uh, recently I also grow a lot of subscribers from different countries around the world. Um, especially um, recently a large, of, a large number of my subscribers came from uh, India. Uh, I can see that on my analytics. So to all my Indian uh, followers and subscribers and viewers, thank you, thank you very much for appreciating my work and for uh, giving nice words whenever they comment. Uh, so there are lots of Indian viewers uh, who appreciate my uh, drawings, my tutorials. And I also grew recently a lot of viewers from the US and Europe. So to all my subscribers in even Africa and Australia. So to all my subscribers in America, in Europe, thank you for uh, supporting my channel and watching my videos and for tolerating my uh, bad accent, bad English accent. And uh, yeah, thank you for always uh, watching my video. It helps me a lot. And uh, I, I wish that uh, I will be able to continue to not just give tutorials but to inspire beginning artists young artists to continue and pursue their passion in portraiture particularly pencil dry medium pencil portraiture i think i'm ready to blend the skin tone i'm using tissue Using circular motion and gently blend the dark shadows 
right here on the jawline. So I, I think I'm gonna use uh, this tissue only for this part, the lower part of the face. Because on this part, it's um, like solid shadow without any details, just dark plain shadow. extended right here in the middle of the face As you can see the, sh the shading process through layering from dark to light is keeping the graphite with almost no bloom or no shine. I think uh, it's already uh, perfectly blended. I think uh, I'm ready to add 3B for uh, darker shadow and shade and uh, to be able to capture the correct shape and the correct uh, contrast on the face. Contrast means the relationship between your dark shadows and your light shadows or the high and the highlights. So um, it should be a, a significantly darker this part compared to this part. So you will see the, the shape of the face to make it more realistic. So let's do this. Let's put our 3B. Now let's complete the shading of the face using 3B. So I think this is going to be the darkest pencil that I'm going to use here. I started with HB or F and then I followed that up with the B and now here's the 3B. Let's start here with uh, the contour on the face. Because uh, when you see a while ago when we have not uh, added uh, enough shade on the face. He looks up at this point. He looks a little bit chubby because uh, we we were not able yet to shade the skin tone with darker tone. So here we're gonna define the face, the shape of the face, by adding darker shadow here on the face. Again, this is the three B. So as you can see, when you do um, the skin tone using layering technique and uh, by using different grades of uh, pencil, um, the shadow becomes more smooth, as you can see here, and more realistic because uh, of the values, the different values of the shadow.
So this is still the 3B. And what I do is identify where the darker shadows are and try to uh, perfect the shading of those black shadows right here on the chin area. Because uh, I put several layers already of different grades of pencils, I feel like at, at this point everything is really nice in terms of the smoothness of the skin tone. It's grainy but it's very nice and smooth. using the cross hatching for quicker and faster layering of the uh, graphite. So this is the first layer of the 3B. Now I wanna do my first blending as well. But I'm not gonna use tissue anymore. Uh, I'm just using the makeup brush because I don't think that there is no need for the tissue because um, I want to preserve a little bit more of the graininess uh, effect of the skin tone. I don't want it to be overly smooth because that would look a little bit more unnatural. So I don't need to put pressure in the brush. I just need to brush it and blend it very very lightly So before I, I uh, put my second layer of the 3B, I just want to um, erase using my mono zero eraser some of the highlights on the skin pores. So it's going to be a lot easier later on to draw the details. Now this is the second layer of the 3B, but this time it's not the, the application or the layering is not um, a while ago I used just a basic uh, cross hatching technique, but this time I will be more intentional with the uh, with my trying to build on the darker shadow. So here the the technique, the layering technique is more like circular motion. 
because uh, I don't want the skin tone to just be uh, flat and smooth. I want to reflect the uh, natural uh, graininess of the skin tone. What I do is, uh, I just don't put all these layers randomly. I constantly look at my reference photo to know exactly where uh, the shadows, the, the, the areas where there is a concentration of uh, shadows. This technique is called uh, stippling. So using this 3B, I'm just trying to put some texture and grains on the face to make it more realistic. This technique is something that is very hard to do, or you can you can almost uh, you can't do this kind of texturing or of detailing using charcoal I'm doing this on the the mid-tone part basically and here on the darker part I am I will not be doing uh, this kind of uh, uh, layering technique only on those parts that there are visible skin textures I hope you can uh, see it these details very very subtle but gives a very nice grainy skin tone I almost lost his mole right here. I'm just gonna darken it a bit. And then on this side of the nose, the details are a bit sharper, so I'm just gonna do some uh, sharper dots.
this right here is uh, adding details, tiny details to the skin tone. It's a very, uh, very time consuming and very meticulous process, but uh, surprisingly, I enjoy it. I personally enjoy doing this. So this is now the second layer of the 3B and I'm using a small circular motion for this layer because I want to create a very nice textured skin tone. I don't want it, even if it is a darker shadow, I don't want it to be just dark and, and uh, smooth. I want some greens on the skin tone to make it more, uh, more realistic. Now using my soft brush again, I'm just going to blend it very very lightly just to soften the, the strokes of the pencil. But I don't want to fully blend because I want to retain the textures that uh, I put.
In part 2, you will see how I draw the lips or the mouth and you will also see how I deal with these crazy details on this lighter part of the face and here in the chin and some parts here, there are still some crazy details that needed to be added uh, on these areas. So uh, I just show you on this long video uh, how I built the dark shadows, the mid-tones and then the light tones, how I layer things using graphic pencils, using different grades of pencils and how I blend and layer everything. And uh, see you on part 2. This video is already very long and uh, I don't want you to get bored. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm surprised that I was able to finish it a bit quicker compared to the regular pace that uh, I used to be doing with this kind of hyper-realistic drawing. See you on part 2. It's going to be long again and boring and uh, yeah, I hope you find time to watch this tutorial video, especially if you are a beginner with graphite pencil portraiture using the most difficult art style, hyper-realism. Bye-bye, see you next time.